Good morning, and thank you all for being here with us today. Welcome to our 2023 State of the Chicago Treasurer's Office Address. Today, I'd like to talk to you about the Office of the Treasurer, the work that we do to provide financial empowerment to all Chicagoans, and how we see our city's financial health at this moment in time. I'd like to start by discussing the role and mission of the treasurer. The fact that the Chicago City Treasurer is an elected position is critically important because it means the people of Chicago have a voice in choosing who manages taxpayers' money. They have a say in deciding who will work to protect the retirement of city employees. They have a say in the person who guides how, where, and with whom our taxpayer dollars are invested. As treasurer, I am proud to be that person. My role is that of a primary fiduciary and steward of taxpayer dollars. Since last year, our portfolio of assets under management has grown steadily from more than $9 billion to now more than $10 billion. The Office of the Treasurer has three primary mandates. To manage the liquidity needs of the city, which means to manage our revenue and our expenses to ensure that we can pay our bills on time. To preserve our capital, which means to invest our money in such a way that we don't lose it and to maximize risk-adjusted returns, which means to make sure taxpayer dollars work for the people of Chicago and help us all to build a better future. We see billions of dollars in revenues and expenses on a monthly basis, and our job is to manage numbers effectively, efficiently, and ethically. Now, that's always a big job but it has never been larger than during the past three years. During that time, we have successfully navigated the city's finances through an unprecedented pandemic that put millions out of work and in physical peril all at the same time. Despite these challenges to the market, the treasurer's office earned $134 million for the taxpayers of Chicago in 2022, up from $116 million in 2021. The Chicago Treasurer's Office has also ended 2022 in a strong liquidity position. We closed out the year with $1.7 billion in cash and cash equivalents. Now that strong liquidity I'm proud to share is simply one of the reasons that Moody upgraded the city of Chicago's credit rating for the first time in 12 years. This means that the cost of the city to borrow money has been lowered, which saves taxpayers money. We also helped our city spring back to life through a pandemic recovery. The Chicago Treasurer's Office Catalyst Fund responded to the pandemic crisis with more than a with a $50 million investment in the Chicago Small Business Resiliency Loan Fund. We helped more than 750 small businesses to weather the storm, retain employees, and continue offering the services and amenities that are critical to the well being of our residents and the vibrancy of our communities. Nothing brings me more satisfaction than when a small business owner comes up to me and gives thanks for helping to keep their doors open and employees working. In some ways, things will never be exactly the same as they were in December of 2019. But the incredible ability of our city and of Chicagoans to adapt and grow out of that experience is a testament to the values that we hold and the future we are committed to building. 
As treasurer, I am the only city elected official to serve as trustee on all four of the city's pension board of trustees, which requires me to make decisions on the investment managers and the investment strategies of these funds. And anyone who knows me knows that I take this aspect of my role very seriously because it's about protecting the future of men and women in organized labor who worked so hard to serve Chicagoans for years as firefighters, police officers, teachers, laborers, and other municipal employees. And they deserve a stable retirement. The trustees of these pension boards are committed to our shared mission in this work. And I am incredibly proud of the great results that we're having. Trustees remain vigilant. In 2022, as a city, we advanced $512 million across four pension funds to meet benefit payments for our firefighters, police, laborers, teachers, and other municipal employees. And a very important point, we did this to avoid liquidating valuable assets and putting the burden on taxpayers. We avoided that. Now I have family members that are out in the freezing cold, baiting alleys, picking up garbage. We see first responders on the front line working paycheck to paycheck. And I recognized this problem very early on and I was pounding the table to come up with a solution. The city had the ability to solve this problem and we did. I'd like to thank Mayor Lightford for her willingness to work with me to come up with this solution. And this is not a small feat. We advanced funds to avoid liquidating assets that would have locked in double digit losses to make an already underfunded pension system more challenging. We cannot stand by to watch our essential and frontline workers pay the price. The millions of dollars advanced now prevents taxpayers from paying billions over time. Now each pension fund has its own MWDBE goals and targets. And I am intentional to not only reach, but to exceed those goals. Because we believe that taxpayer money should be managed by people who actually represent our taxpayers and understand their lived experiences. So we continue to push those conversations related to diversity and representation in the management of these funds. In 2022, we saw many of the same forces continue to shape the markets that we saw in 2021. Interest rates climbed, inflation remained a factor, and the supply chain issues that led to some of that in inflation continued. Those factors generally create a tough environment for stocks and bonds and wipe out the value of pay raises. And in 2022 and 2023, we've seen the downstream effects continue into a wave of corporate layoffs. And while many consider the pandemic to be over, the constant mutations of the COVID virus continue to create uncertainty. Nonetheless, my team has done its job of controlling the things that we can. And one of those things is creating lasting, measurable impact. I have believed from the moment I took office that my greatest duty is to invest for maximum impact. Impact on Chicagoans impact on our communities, impact on our finances, and impact on our future. That sense of duty drives me and those on my team to really go above and beyond each and every day. And I'm proud to say that in 2022, 
we took an enormous step forward when we initiated and passed the divestment of fossil fuel ordinance. Now this process for my team happened over 18 months through the divestiture of more than $70 million through sales and maturities. Chicago is a member of C40, a global group of 96 cities representing 700 plus million people looking to address the climate crisis. And divestment from fossil fuels was a key step that put us among some of the most forward thinking and forward acting cities in this world. Furthermore, through the Chicago City Council, I acted to cement that action through an ordinance that prevents it from investing in fossil fuel companies that fail to protect our, our planet from climate change. Now this ordinance requires that all future treasurers deliberate and determine an exclusive list of fossil fuel companies on an annual basis and prevent future reinvestment in those that remain out of alignment with our values. I understand how challenging it is for the men and women of organized labor to contemplate the shifting nature of jobs in the energy sector as society continues to move towards clean energy jobs. That's why I'm so proud of their partnership on this ordinance and their vision for how it will benefit us all long term. This process will and should evolve to incorporate our growing understanding of the impact of climate change. I was motivated to divest because of the clear consistence, consensus in the scientific community that the time to act is now. In fact, Many believe that our society has waited far too long to move away from a reliance on fossil fuels and carbon emitting processes. I have often said that our investments as a city must reflect the values of the people we represent. And this action better aligns our investments with the prevailing values of our Chicagoans. Excuse me. It is equally important, however, to acknowledge that moving away from fossil fuels is simply smarter investing. I have a responsibility to ensure a stable fiscal future for the city of Chicago. And the last few years have brought about one of the most turbulent times in recent memory for the oil and gas industry. In 2020, there were reports of over 100 energy companies declaring bankruptcy in North America. In 2022, the invasion of Ukraine by Russia again put the oil industry in chaos. Municipalities have a responsibility to be risk averse as we look to protect and grow taxpayer dollars. So divesting of fossil fuels is simply smart investing and a part of upholding my fiduciary duty to the taxpayers of this city. But I am not only the treasurer of Chicago, I am also a mother who believes that we must do everything in our power to leave behind a better, cleaner, and healthier future for our children. That means becoming thoughtful and intentional about our everyday actions, from the way we build our city to the way we invest. For example, the treasurer's office now hold more than $187 million in social impact investment assets, focused on low income housing, social welfare and green initiatives, ensuring that taxpayers not only get a fiscal return, but get it through responsible investing. It also means helping to create a world in which the harms of systemic discrimination no longer exist and our children don't have to face the same barriers that previous generations did. 
I've never shied away from having those difficult conversations about the way the banking industry has long upheld the systemic racism on which so many of its policies and practices were built. Here in Chicago, in much of the 20th century, redlining kept black and brown residents from owning homes and from living in certain neighborhoods. The legacy of that policy has been visible throughout this city for more than 80 years in under-resourced and disinvested communities on the south and west sides of Chicago. Now you've heard me speak about the creation of the Advancing Equity in Banking Commission in partnership with Illinois State Treasurer Michael Ferrix. AEBC is a commission of major banking CEOs who came together during the racial reckoning of 2020, recognizing that systemic racism exists in banking and is holding back black and brown Chicagoans and Illinoisans. They were ready to stand up and say, this is not acceptable and we're going to do something about it. In 2022, we released our final report on this two-year journey, which in reality marks only the beginning of a years-long journey that the industry must undertake if we want to correct the lending disparities and lack of representation we see in banks across America. You can download our report and read it at Banking on Equity, which lays out lessons learned over the last two years right on our website at chicagocitytreasurer.com. I am also encouraged that so many of the institutions really looked inward, implemented essential programs, and took important steps toward real lasting change. For example, BMO increased outreach and recruitment efforts among black and brown talent, which helped the bank to reach new hiring goals for senior roles held by people of color. They also pledged to expand that number by 80% by 2025. That means the creation of scores of good paying jobs in positions of leadership for black and brown Chicagoans. J.P. Morgan Chase committed over the next several years to finance the development of 40,000 units of affordable housing and invest $600 million for mortgages for 3,000 black and brown families in Chicago. And PNC banks committed $1 billion to diversity and equity that includes expanding and lending for small businesses and homeowners in under-resourced and disinvested black and brown communities, including providing resources for returning citizens that will help reduce recidivism. Now that's a start, but we need far, far more. And we all need to keep that pressure on financial institutions to make good on their promises. I believe that the AEBC was a major step in that direction. Now, I'd like to share what we did over the last year to give the citizens of Chicago the tools and resources they needed to build wealth and create a more economically stable future. Part of my job as treasurer of Chicago is to help Chicagoans achieve financial stability. And that has never been more urgent than now. As we emerge from a pandemic that turned people's lives and finances upside down, that's why I am proud that we brought the Hope Inside program to Chicago. Hope Inside is made possible through a partnership with Operation Hope, the largest nonprofit provider of financial literacy and economic empowerment services for adults and youth. Now, if you were born into a family of means, financial literacy is one of your native languages. But if you grew up in an underserved community or a family that struggled to have enough, you may have never learned that language of money. 
and it is not taught, unfortunately, in schools. So Operation Hope works to bridge that gap and disrupt poverty by giving the people it works with a sense of inclusion and the feeling of dignity that comes with knowing how to build a financially secure future. Through our partnership, the Hope Inside Initiative, we have been offering credit and money management resources to Chicagoans for free. In the financial literacy development workshops, Chicagoans have been, be, been able to create a budget, learn to understand and fix errors on their credit reports, and start planning for home ownership. In our coaching sessions, counselors have helped residents make a plan for getting rid of debt and raising their credit scores. In 2022, we provided financial empowerment services to more than 1,500 times, including credit coaching sessions and bank referrals. 57% of our participants saw an improvement in their credit scores, with many achieving a credit score even higher than prime. Now that's a score of about 1660 through 719, the threshold that makes banks more likely to lend and offers the most favorable terms for lending. Hope and Sire participants are paying down debt as well. 48% reduced their total debt owed to credit cards, expenses, and other outstanding loans by almost $2,000. Now, one of our participants who I recently had the opportunity to meet, Diamond Montgomery from Chatham, she told me that she paid off her credit card debt raised her credit score by more than 150 points and is now preparing to apply for a home loan and will become a first time homeowner. So this program is transforming lives and I want yours to be one of them. Be sure to visit our website at chicagocitytreasurer.com to learn how you can take advantage of these free financial services. Now our webinar series, Money Mondays with Melissa is still going strong. Since we launched during the pandemic to provide Chicagoans with important information on financial health and access to resources available to them. More than 5,000 residents tuned in during 2022 for valuable talks from notable individuals such as Chicago Department of Public Health Commissioner, Dr. Allison Arwady, Cook County State's Attorney Kim Fox, Dr. Ezeke, as well as financial experts in tax preparation and savings for college. And we're excited to roll out a set of new guests this year with our next Money Mondays with Melissa providing help with tax preparation on February 27. And on Monday, March 13th, we're featuring Chicago's own Melody Hobson and Melody Span Cooper. I hope that you'll join us. In April, the Treasurer's Office, along with the Federal Reserve of Chicago, held Money Smart Week, a week-long financial literacy experience designed to help our communities better manage their personal finances and plan for the future. We helped attendees access resources focused on health, credit improvement, home ownership, social security benefits, and so much more. Now, last fall, we held the Building Wealth Today for Tomorrow, Financial Empowerment Weekend at the UIC Forum. This free event, combined two signature events, the Building Wealth Today for Tomorrow Summit, as well as the Financial Services Career Fair. We know the job market is getting hotter and financial services firms are beginning to understand the importance of diversity, equity, and inclusion for their bottom lines. So we were excited to put more than 1,500 Chicagoans in touch with financial service organizations and agencies for opportunities to gain insights into current 
financial trends, build relationships to obtain job opportunities in the financial industry, financial services industry, and join workshops on saving money, building credit, buying a home, and starting and growing their business. In fact, 10 residents left the career fair event with a new job in banking on the spot. And since then, we've heard from our partners that scores of relationships were developed that are sure to lead to additional opportunities. We had wonderful guests and panelists like the iconic rapper and philanthropist MC Light, financial expert Dr. Lynn Richardson, Operation Hope CEO John Hope Bryant, HGTV's Allison Victoria, the Shark Tank's Damon John, and Bill Rancic of The Apprentice. And we can't wait to do it all again in 2023, bigger and better. So join us on September 6th and 7th again at the UIC Forum. Stay tuned. Now, one of my most important goals as treasurer is to increase awareness of the financial services industry amongst our youth and to inspire them to pursue careers in the industry. The Chicago Treasurer's Office believes in the power of education as the path to creating a better future and building generational wealth. I know because I'm the first in my family to walk that path. My mother worked hard her entire life so that I can get an education and build a career of service and build generational wealth that I can pass down even to my own daughter someday. But we all know that college is costly. So I want to do more than just inspire young people to go to college. I want to make it more financially feasible. That's why in the treasurer's office, we help defray the cost by offering scholarships to high school seniors, especially black, brown, and Native American students. We also know that exposure is vitally important for these students who don't always see people like themselves in the financial services industry. So we conduct outreach to ensure that they know about careers that are available to them and make sure that they understand that those careers can be theirs. Now, as we look ahead to 2023, we have many ambitious goals. First, we will work even harder to further our impact as we expand diversity in the financial services industry and create more opportunities for more Chicagoans to achieve financial stability. Second, we are already launching a partnership with the Goldman Sachs 10,000 Small Businesses Program for Chicago entrepreneurs. They'll have a new opportunity to grow their small business thanks to a structured, intuitive, innovative business education program. This 15-week program will help entrepreneurs gain access to capital and learn practical skills across a broad range of topics. It's available at no cost to small business owners. And the application period is actually open now through June 6th. So small business owners, don't wait. Enroll on our website today at chicagocitytreasurer.com. Now in March, we'll debut our new quarterly webinar, Wealth Wednesdays, which is designed to help you learn from those who have successfully traveled the path to wealth creation. They'll share their own stories, their journeys, and their practical ideas for how others can follow in their footsteps towards a prosperous future. And I'm pleased to share that in 2023, the Chicago Treasurer's Office will invest city capital in ways which not only provide a sound return for Chicago taxpayers, but also provide a greater social return. We'll double down on making investments that not only make fiscal sense, but also help transform 
our disinvested and under-resourced communities and the lives of their residents and families. For instance, we'll invest capital that will be used to fuel more mortgages for first-time home buyers in low to moderate income communities. I am proud that our office continues to act as a guide through challenging times and inspires Chicagoans to take charge of their financial future. I encourage you to stay in touch on a day-to-day -day basis with our office's activities and events and initiatives through our website, our social media channels, and email newsletters. In the meantime, I thank you for your time today, and I look forward to continuing to engage with the wonderful, resilient people of Chicago, who gives me hope each and every day. Thank you, Chicago.